Hello everybody, welcome to The Take. I'm your host, Krishna Mano, and in today's episode, we will be expanding our segment, Deep Takes. Today, we'll be addressing the hubbub you might have heard in the news in the past few weeks, specifically, President Biden's infrastructure bill. We'll start off with a brief history of its journey through Congress, moving on to what it actually does, and concluding with its, uh, awesomeness? Not really, but close. Try again. Awfulness? No, but keep trying. Avocado. What? No, where'd you get that from? I'm getting it effects. You know, how the bill will affect and impact the quotidian cycle of the lives of Americans. Oh, who would have guessed? Am I right? No one? So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get right into it. The technical name for this bill in Congress is HR 3684, or the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. In more casual talk, you might hear it be referred to as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill to help President Biden's Build Back Better policy agenda. And if everything I just said sounds like random globber spool, don't worry. Let's go over the definitions. Infrastructure means the basic, most fundamental structures necessary for the function of a society. This includes both physical items like roads, bridges, and air transport, and organizational facilities, such as employment benefits. Bipartisan is simply cooperation between two political parties to achieve a common goal. This bill is supported by citizens and representatives on either side of the political spectrum, both Democrats and Republicans. I'm gonna go on a quick informational tangent here, so bear with me for about a minute. Just make yourself a snack, snatch a cozy blanket from the closet in the basement, which was last opened in 1995, cuddle up in your naptime sofa, and stare at me on the screen as I nerd myself out on the infrastructure bill's journey to Congress. Needless to say, this poor bill has gone through a lot. Its journey started way back on June 4th of 2021, and in five months, the infrastructure bill has been drafted and edited at committees, debated for hours by Congress people, been voted on by both houses of Congress, Congress, been voted on whether or not it should be voted on, and I kid you not, voted on whether that vote should have occurred. Until it finally reached President Biden's desk in the Oval Office alongside two telephones, an Amtrak model train, and an amazing amount of pens. Two things. One, can't blame you, Mr. Press, you can't not love trains. And two, the government really needs to shift funding, especially when it's being spent on not one, not two, but ten pence. I, the delegate Krishna Mano of Michigan, hereby announce that we should cut down to giving the president nine pence, spending the funding of the other pen to decrease the price of Apple's cube charges, which people seem to misplace an awfully large amount of the time. Back to the matter at hand. On June 4th, the bill was introduced to the House by a group of Democrats and spread to the public by President Biden. On June 22nd, the bill was amended in the Committee of Transportation, giving it and taking away features that would both help Americans and help it pass through Congress. On the 1st of July, the bill passed the House with a vote of 221 to 201. A month later, on August 10th, the bill passed the Senate as well with a 69 to 30 vote. But but before it got past the Senate, an amendment had to be made. Because of the intricate laws of the government, this amendment had to be passed by the House as well, which it finally did on November 5th. And on November 8th, like I said before, the bill was presented to President Biden to get the final signature before implementation, which was signed into law by El Presidente. So now we know how the bill got to where it is. But why is this bill so important that it's worth being the headlines on every major newspaper for months? Well, it's kind of sort of the biggest infrastructure bill ever passed by Congress. But how big? Uh, really big? No, like a quantity. Uh... 1.2 trillion dollars. Come again? 1.2 trillion dollars. There, I said it. Trillion with a T. Mathematically speaking, this is 5% of the US GDP. But how exactly will this large amount of money be used? Let's go on another tangent here. Originally, President Biden had proposed the American Jobs Plan in March of 2021, which proposed an investment of $2.5 trillion. With the United States national debt already at $28 trillion, the bill faced a lot of opposition in Congress, which led to cutting down some major investments. But still, there's lots of important legislation in the bill that did pass. Let's start off with the most major part 
roads and bridges. According to CNN, the bill adds an investment of $110 billion for roads, bridges, and major infrastructure projects. Specifically, it includes $40 billion for bridge repair, replacement, and rehabilitation, which is the largest bridge investment since the construction of the interstate highway system in the 1950s. The bill also includes $16 billion for major projects that would be too large or complex for traditional funding programs. Some 20% or 173,000 miles of the nation's highways and major roads are in poor condition, as are 45,000 bridges according to the White House. And finally, $11 billion will go to transportation safety. Persisting on President Biden's love for the train company Amtrak, Let's move on to railroads for both cargo and passengers. $39 billion would go to modernizing public transit, $66 billion to passenger and freight rail, and $12 billion for intercity rail service. As the world gets more technology dependent, Fast network speed is important for people all across the country. As the bill reads, access to affordable, reliable, high-speed broadband is essential to full participation in modern life in the U.S. The 2019 novel coronavirus pandemic has underscored the critical importance of affordable, high-speed broadband for individuals, families, and communities to be able to work, learn, and connect remotely while supporting social distancing. Under these accounts and many more, the package provides $65 billion. The bill also grants $17 billion in port infrastructure and $25 billion in airports to address repair and maintenance backlogs, reduce congestion and emissions near ports and airports, and promote electrification and other low-carbon technologies. The last essential part of this bill was environmental regulations and remedies. The bill provides $7.5 billion dollars for zero and low emission buses and ferries and campaigns the idea of electric school buses. And another $7.5 billion goes to building a nationwide network of plug-in electric vehicle chargers. And there it is, the major parts of the bill, although the relatively minor parts will also add on to these amazingly large impacts. Which leads us to think, what exactly are these impacts? How will these new pieces of legislation influence our lives? Well, firstly, the bill improves commuting standards all across the U.S., including redesigning bike lanes and intersections, increasing reliability of buses, and improving the construction and business. To specify on this last one, redesigning and creating new infrastructure will take a lot of labor, so these plans will increase job opportunities. According to NPR, there's going to be one million jobs over a five-year time period because of the bill. The funding will also help with fixing up fragile parts of railroad tracks as well as expanding them to to other parts of the US. This is especially helpful for the North Corridor, where as the Wall Street Journal reports, Amtrak estimates more than 2,200 trains travel each day, including through one leaky Baltimore tunnel built in the late 1800s. Martin? Yes, Johnny? You know what? I think, just a suspicion, but I seriously think that in about mm, 200 years, a man who loves trains and sunglasses will say that the tunnel we're building right now, you know, for the trains, he's gonna say, hmm, looks like there's a leak. Let me fix it up by passing legislation. And you really think he's gonna say that? Yes, I do, Martin. I really do. And what do we know? Martin was right. The bill will change that tunnel amongst many others, which will lead to faster and more reliable trips with Amtrak. Furthermore, the bill highlights airports as one area where the U.S. is falling short, pointing to the U.S.'s failure to make the top 25 in global airport rankings. To raise the U.S.'s global position in the perspective of airports, the package funds terminal projects, air traffic control tower facilities, and general airport infrastructure grants. Still, on the topic of vehicles, the bill tries to break down the barriers of owning electric cars by increasing fast charging stations. These stations will increase the sales of zero emission vehicles, which will in turn reduce the effects of climate change. There will also be more accessibility to the internet as the bill strives to make broadband networks more affordable. The package makes a permanent subsidy to help low-income households pay for high-speed internet service, setting it at $30 a month. 
that is lower than the $50 a month that millions of those households are currently receiving under an emergency pandemic program launched earlier this year. Something that affects a lot of Americans is access to clean water, mainly due to pipes contaminated with lead. So far, states have struggled with minimal funding, hard logistics, and a labor shortage. But the infrastructure bill would give billions in funding to states to efficiently eliminate these pipes. Our power supply would also be upgraded by strengthening power lines affected by natural disasters and creating and producing technology to avoid blackouts. The Wall Street Journal reports, last year a record 22 weather-related events, including wildfires and hurricanes, caused $1 billion or more in damage. A total $95 billion in damage in 2020, double the annual average, came before a February freeze this year that left millions of people in Texas without power for days and led to more than 200 deaths. And before Hurricane Ida took out more than 2,000 miles of transmission lines in Louisiana and Mississippi this summer. But the biggest and most important effect of this bill is climate change. It's an indubitable fact that in the last couple years, we have only seen an increase in natural disasters due to climate change, like floods, wildfires, hurricanes, and droughts. The bill provides billions in funding to mitigate the effects of floods and hurricanes, manage the wildfires, and increase recycling. It also funds programs that build rain gardens in urban areas, like small strips of green space between streets and sidewalks to help absorb stormwater runoff. So now that I've laid out what the infrastructure bill is, how it passed through Congress, what it does, and how it will affect us regular Americans, it's your job to figure out whether or not you support it. Mainly because people make their own decisions, but also partly because who's going to care about what some tiny carefree 12 year old thinks, right? But in a nutshell, the bill will clearly improve the many sectors that citizens like you and I depend on. But there are some environmental concerns on how many carbon emissions will be created during the production of whatever's in the bill. But then again, these provisions are created to save the climate as well. So that's just one example of the many arguments from either side of this bill. It's up to you to weigh these points. And when you do come to a conclusion, feel free to share it in the comments down below. And if not that, then put on your aviator sunglasses, start your model train, take out one of your 10 presidential pens and start drafting your own infrastructure bill. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, as always, read the news.